Hey, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Gourmet Woodsman. My name is Greg. Let's make some snack sticks. Today I'll be making pepperoni snack sticks and summer sausage snack sticks. These are both fermented, semi-dried, and cooked, although not in the same order. Let's make these. Today I'll be grinding meat for pepperoni three different ways. They're all going to use about 35% beef, about 40% pork, and about 25% back fat. My beef and pork are not super lean, which is why I'm using 25% back fat. If they were a little more lean, I would be using closer to 30% back fat and making up for that with my beef and pork ratio. But anywhere in that window is going to be great. Do you like to stick that plunger in there? When I load my meat, I'm going to add my beef and my back fat first. I'm going to switch bowls real quick and run the pork through. So the reason I did this separate is because I'm going to change my plate. Stick this in here to keep it from going straight in there, but I want to grind this beef and the back fat through this four millimeter, this finer die that I have. It does change the texture, how fine you grind it. Sometimes you do have to use the plunger to regrind things I found. 31 degrees, 32 degrees after the second grind. So for now, I'm going to stick this away into the refrigerator. For my summer sausage snack sticks, I'm going to be using about 55 to 60 percent beef, 30 to 35 percent pork belly, and 10 percent pork back fat. It's going to be perfect. Now I want to grind this two or three times. So I want it to be really soft. Not quite emulsified, but close. I am going to send them through a third time. Well, after three grinds, seems to be about 43 degrees, which is a little warm. I maybe should have stuck it in the freezer before that last one. Huh, I'll stick it in the freezer now. Time to get my spices ready. Snack sticks and pepperoni, same spice. It's gonna take black pepper, some fennel seeds. Take my pan, I'm gonna get those toasting up. They're on low heat, maybe a tap or two above low. And we're going to use some anise. Anise, anise. You know, it's the licorice spice. I'm going to go add those to my toasting seeds. Now it's time for everything else. Starting with salt. Oops. Almost perfect, but a little bit more than I need. And I'm going to use some cure number one. Because these will be fermenting. They'll benefit from the nitrite while they're fermenting at warm temperatures. It's going to take kind of a lot of dextrose. What that's going to do is get all that bacteria very active. I want to go pretty low with this pH. It's going to drop it pretty low pretty quickly. That's what adding this much dextrose is going to do. It's not going to make it sweet. I'm also going to add quite a bit of sugar, the same amount of sugar as I added dextrose, 0.8%. Been reading one of Stanley and Adam Marinsky's books on cured sausages, and they actually use 1% in their pepperoni, so I'm dialing it back a little bit from that. Time to add some flavor. Oh, time to check on my spices. Yep, just started to smell them. That was perfect timing. All right, black pepper, white pepper, cayenne pepper, 
And finally some paprika. I'm just gonna crack these. Don't really wanna try to make a powder. Maybe just a very, very coarse powder. Add that to my spices. Wow, that smells really good. I think these are gonna be really good pepperonis. Summer sausage snack sticks. Gonna start with some salt. Gonna use some cure number one, because this is gonna be a fermented sausage. Cure number one will make it safe to be at uh, the fermenting temperatures for as long as they need to be there. Gonna give it a bit of dextrose, a lot more than a lot of fermented things. And this is one way you can affect the amount of tanginess you get from your ferment. And I'm gonna add some sugar. Dextrose is really readily available, and the sugar takes a little longer for it to break down. This will all add to the food for the bacteria. And it seems like the faster you ferment, the more tangy it gets. Now I'm ready for my flavors. Should have started with this, but that's okay. I'm gonna add some black pepper, a little coriander, a little bit of allspice. And put those into my cold pan. And warm them up a little slowly. It just releases some of their oils. Now I'm going to weigh up my mustard seed. And I'm going to toast this too. Even though I'm going to leave these whole. Actually, probably half of them, roughly. That's what I'm going to do. All right, that's the whole amount of mustard seed. I'm going to dump half those into my seeds that are toasting. And I'll save the other half and toast those in a minute. Gonna add a little nutmeg, because all I have is the pre-ground stuff, which is kind of lame. It's better to have fresh grated nutmeg than this pre-jarred stuff. A little bit of garlic powder. And the last thing I'm gonna add to my summer sausage is some non-fat dry milk powder. Just helps ensure against having a crumbly sausage. While that pan's hot, I'm just gonna put these mustard seeds in. I'm not going to put them on any heat, just in this pan while it's still warm. Just warming them up wakes them up a little and brings out their oils. Add those ground spices. Add in these whole mustard seeds. I'm just going to set that aside until I'm ready to use it. For my pepperoni snack sticks, I'll be using this flavor of Italy starter culture. I really like this. It's a very fast fermenter. What I don't like about it, it doesn't tell you what organisms are in it, and it doesn't tell you what temperature it likes to be at for fermenting, so you kind of have to trial and error it yourself. I've found it likes to be 80 to 90 degrees, even a little warmer. It does its thing real fast. So I'll be adding a quarter teaspoon of this, and I'll add a quarter cup of water, and then I'll just let that sit for a good 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour before I want to use it. We'll be good to go. I'll be using this FLC starter culture to ferment my summer sausage snack sticks. You can see they have, uh, it has these bacteria in here. That's what's going to cause the lactic acid that's going to lower the pH. Ready to mix the pepperoni. Ready to mix the snack sticks. Got my spices. Quite a lot of sugar in this because I want it to ferment fast and tangy. And I'm going to add my starter culture. Again, this is the flavor of Italy. It's a very fast acidifier. Should get it nice and tangy. Now this particular batch is gonna be for snack sticks and for pepperoni. Figure, might as well mix it once, clean the stuffer once, I'll just change my horn size, and, and that way I only need one tester piece for the pH also. So, save a little there. But I'm just going to mix this till it all comes together, as always, till it's sticky, furry, lifting up the bowl, trying to pull my gloves off, and all that. Yep, oh, starting to want to lift the bowl, not quite though. And you can see, it's really not that hairy yet. You can see I have some extract, some protein extraction going but it's really not very furry yet. It's sticking together. It's getting a little sticky, <clears throat> but it needs to get stickier.
Oh yeah, now we're getting there. It's lifting the bowl, but not sticking as well as it should. Not there yet. All right, I think we're really close. That's sticking to my hand pretty good. Lifting the bowl up pretty good. And importantly, it's looking pretty furry. You can see these strands they start to reach out. That's how I know it's done. So I'm going to go get my stuffer and get stuff in. I'm going to be using 22. 24 sheep casings. Use patience, get them started plenty early. And then add baking soda to your water to soften them. They become quite a bit easier to deal with. So as always, put some water on your horn. And I usually just kind of go around, get it started and go around. Find the opening, get it around the whole thing, and then we're on. Try to keep the table a little bit dry-ish. Now I'm just gonna get this to the end of my horn. Pull this off. Make a little knot, just bunch a hole at the end to let any trapped air out. Oh, now we're going. Fine touch with these. I'm not really linking them in small links, so can be a little tighter. And it should be a little tighter because it's going to be drying. That said, these also burst really easy. Your sheep casings are fragile to work with, but eventually you do get the hang of it. Definitely a little loose in this one part of the middle. So I'm just going to real gently try to move that a little bit. Should be all right. So I'm making a pretty small batch. It's kind of an experiment. Certainly not the same size, but like I always say, we just don't all get the same size sausage. Kind of think I want to make the rest into pepperonis. Although I could do a little more. Yeah, maybe I'll do a little more. I want to make sure I got pepperoni for my pizza. That was what started this project was I wanted some pepperoni for my pizza. Lube up the horn again <clears throat> so that it slides off good. No one likes a sticky horn. Damn it. All right. That's a sign. I'm not making more. Now I'm just going to poke a few holes in these sticks. Flip them over and poke a few more holes in the other side. Now I'm going to take what was left in my hopper. Gonna wrap it up in some plastic wrap, and that's how I will test my pH. That will keep my snack sticks humid. I'll be fermenting in my oven with the power off and the light on. Now it's time to do the same thing for the summer sausage snack sticks. Gonna mix in my salt and spices, gonna mix in the starter culture, some cold water, and then we mix. The uh, summer sausage snack stick experiment. You know, sometimes there's not a recipe for things because it's just not a good idea. And other times, just, you know, someone hasn't done it yet or maybe you just haven't seen it yet. I like summer sausage. I like things that are easy to eat like a snack stick. So we'll see how it works out. All right, that's lifting the bowl up pretty good. It's sticking to my hand pretty good. You can see it's looking fuzzy. It's got strands coming out. They're a little finer than many sausages, but I think that's just because I ground this three times. It's a much finer consistency than a lot of sausages and salamis I've been making as of late. And this does have a binder, so I'm gonna wanna get it stuffed pretty quickly here. And the binder definitely makes it thicker and a little harder to run through your stuffer if you don't do it right away. So yeah, I guess it's time to get that going. I'm just going to take this little bit that's left in my hopper, wrap it up in plastic, and that's how I'll test my pH. I'm going to move this all to a sheet pan that fits into my oven a little better. Cover this with some plastic wrap to keep it, keep it like 90-95% humidity is what it says it wants to be to do the fermentation thing. I'm going to stick that into my oven with the oven off and the light on, and that'll keep it between 90 and 95, which should be Pretty nice fast ferment for this FLC culture. See you in a bit. Well, these summer sausage snack sticks have been fermenting for about 18 hours. I was going for four or five. Looks like I overshot just a little bit. Next stage is going to be smoking these. 
just like I would with a summer sausage. Well, I'm going to put these on a scale. I'm going to jot down the starting weight of these summer sausages and go take them out to the smoker. I've got my summer sausage snack sticks into the smoker. I've got the door cracked a little bit. It's set for about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 Celsius, and that should dry them out over the next hour. After about an hour, I'm going to add some chips, turn up the heat to 125 Fahrenheit, or about 52 Celsius, and then every hour I'm going to raise the temperature about 10 degrees, which I guess is like 5 or 6 degrees Celsius. Here's my test piece for my pepperoni snack sticks. I wanted this to get down to like 4.5 or 4.6. It's still at 4.7, so that's going to need a little while too. It's been 20 hours right now. Well, it's been just shy of 25 hours. Now I'm curious where this is at for pH. All right, that's where I want to be. Pepperoni. I wanted to be down around 4.5 or 4.6, so nice and tangy for that American-style pepperoni. Well, my next, my next step for these pepperoni snack sticks is get a starting weight. I'll make a target weight. I'll write it down. I'm going to partially dry them, then I'm going to smoke them. I don't know how much smoke will stick when I cook them because they'll be partially dried. I'm going to get some cold smoke on them now. I'm using the Bear Attack smoker. See, I got a nice bit of cold smoke going. I've got my pepperoni snack sticks. Everything's cold smoking. I've shown you this before, but just using a little smoke generator. Intake tube is stuck into the intake of my smoker. And it has an aquarium pump that's pushing air through it, keeping it going. Pretty simple setup. Well, after about six and a half hours of, of sort of smoking at pretty low temperatures, and I say sort of smoking because that smoker doesn't make great smoke at low temperatures. Anyway, I'm going to Give this a cold water bath for about 10 minutes, and I'll see you then. Gonna hang these up for a few hours to dry, bloom a little before I stick them in my before I stick them in my drying chamber. It's been five days in the drying chamber for these pepperoni sticks. Let's see how much weight they've lost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the weight it is now, divide that by the starting weight, minus one, and we have lost about 26%, 26 percent, 26 and a half percent. So I was targeting about 20. Probably could have taken out a day or two ago, but um, this will be just fine. My next step's gonna be to cook this. So I put these into this electric smoker. I put a few chips in, although I'm not very impressed with the amount of smoke this makes at low temperatures. But any amount of smoke I can get on these will be appreciated. Starting the temperatures low at 125, I'll leave it there for about an hour or so. And then we'll bump it up to 10 degrees. Well, they're taking on a little color. They do look like they're sweating a little bit. It's been a little over an hour, and I did just raise the temperature to 135 Fahrenheit. Which I'm not sure about the centigrade, but I'll put it up there. Added a few more chips, although I'm not sure. I don't really like the amount of smoke this makes at a low temperature. And I'm not sure how much smoke these sticks are going to take on since they're so since they're partially dried already, but uh, yeah, we'll check back in a little while. My pepperoni sticks hit the 140 degrees internal temperature I was going for, so into a water bath they go. Then I'll bloom them, and then we'll taste. Summer sausage has been drying for seven days now, and I'm pretty sure they're ready to go. After about five and a half days in the drying chamber, these have lost 39% of their weight. Let's compare these to the pepperoni sticks. The time has come to try these snack sticks. Here's your pepperoni. Looking very nice inside, I gotta say. And the summer sausage. Wasn't really going for fat definition, that's why I double ground things. Triple ground the summer sausage. But uh, yeah, let's see how they taste. I'm gonna start with the summer sausage. Mm. Wow, that has a lot of tanginess. Super tangy. I mean, I overshot pH cut down to 4.45. It's going for 4.5 or 6. Almost feels like I just ate a piece of lemon. That said, it's really good. I mean, that's definitely the predominant flavor is that sour. Kind of punches you in the face with it. 
But if you like that part of a summer sausage, it's pretty good snack stick. Texture's great, chew is great, snap is good. Let's give the pepperoni one a try. Hmm. Well, I have to say, I like the pepperoni one more. It's a lot more complex. First you get hit with the pepper, and then I'm getting the fennel, the anise. Then I'm getting hit that it does have some sourness. It actually is pretty sour, but it's not the first thing that hits you. But it is pretty tangy and sour. And then the smoke comes in, and this is actually way more smoky tasting than the summer sausage. So they're both really good. They both have great texture, but this has a lot more going on, the pepperoni one. In my opinion, pepperoni snack stick wins out. Judging from how common pepperoni snack sticks are and how uncommon summer sausage snack sticks are, I guess most people probably agree. I mean, I like a good summer sausage, but I actually like pepperoni better, so kind of makes sense I'd like the pepperoni snack sticks better. They're both good. If I was gonna make one again, I would just, I would make the pepperoni. But if you like summer sausage better than pepperoni, you might wanna give the summer sausage snack sticks a try. They're both worthy. If you got anything out of this video, anything helpful, just some entertainment. Basically, if you're still watching this video at this point, you should definitely give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. And no matter what you do, put some love into your food. Peace.